Human culture is unlike anything found among other animals. Even our closest animal relatives, the chimpanzees, do not demonstrate the levels of complexity and sophistication that we find in human society. As far as we know at the moment, our ability to communicate, to think about the world, and to imagine ourselves into consciousness is unique in the entire universe. Not only is human culture the result of millions of years of evolution, it is also evolution's crowning achievement. In this video we will look at what we know about human evolution and the beginnings of human culture in that long process. Since its beginnings with the Big Bang, the entire universe has gone through a process of evolution. Human evolution is merely a very small part of the development of the larger universe. The material that makes up our planet and our physical bodies, for example, is the waste product of suns that lived and died billions of years before us. This picture, taken by the Planck satellite, shows the universe is a much less organized state only 370,000 years after the Big Bang occurred. This is made possible by the fact that the deeper into space we look, the farther back in time we look. To put human evolution in the context of a cosmic timescale, scientists believe the universe is about 14 billion years old, the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, and life on Earth first appeared around 3.6 billion years ago. Those of us known as Homo sapiens, however, didn't emerge until only 200,000 years ago. As the evolutionary clock on the right makes clear, humans appeared very, very late in the game. If the entire history of the planet is scaled to a day, humans evolved into existence a minute ago. Homo sapiens, otherwise known as us, are not descended from the chimps and apes we see in the world today. That is a common misunderstanding. Chips and apes are our evolutionary cousins, not our parents. Rather, we all are primates who together split from old world monkeys about 30 million years ago. These roots are revealed in the fact that human DNA is over 98 percent identical to chimpanzees. Our specific lineage, known as hominids, split from the other primates about 12 million years ago. And our genus, known as Homo, from the Latin word for man, began about 2.5 million years ago. The Homo genus in general is characterized by three traits. Bipedalism, or walking upright, a large brain, and a complex culture. As we look back in time, those are the attributes we will look for in the creatures we discover to determine if they are related to us. The most significant of those three traits is our brain. Our brain is structured the same and has the same parts as all other primates. However, a human's brain has a much larger cerebral cortex. The brain structure that lies behind our forehead is two to three times larger than would be expected in relation to the other parts of our primate brain. So it's not that our whole brain grew in size, but specifically our prefrontal cortex. A large frontal lobe is significant because that is the brain structure responsible for symbolic thought which makes humans able to create complicated symbol systems like oral and written language. It allows us to think abstractly, it allows us to imagine things, and most importantly it allows us to imagine ourselves, which is the source of our unique self-consciousness. Thanks to our amazing brains we can discover truths about the world, like evolution, and pass that knowledge along to our children. The reason humans have dominated the planet is not because we are stronger, faster, have a better sense of smell, or see farther. It is because we are able to use symbols to think, imagine, communicate, 
and pass along to all subsequent generations the sum total of what's been learned and the knowledge we have gathered in the thousands of years before ourselves. This slide depicts our fairly complicated family tree. There are numerous side branches containing lots of cousins that no longer exist. In this presentation, we'll only look at the highlights of our direct lineage. However, it is important to realize that these different species often live together in the same areas for tens of thousands of years, rather than died out as the next one began. Also be sure to notice, as we look at the progression of our evolutionary ancestors, how brain size grows larger, and as the brain grows larger, how we see the emergence of human-like culture. The complicated society we live in today is the product of the marvelous brain bequeathed to us by evolution. At this point in time, our oldest known ancestor is Artipithecus Romidus, or Artie, as she's called by her close friends. She was found in Africa, and her skeleton, shown in this slide, is 4.4 million years old. She could walk upright, similar to us, but she could also climb trees like a monkey. As deduced from her skeleton, Artie was a female, about four feet tall and weighing 100 pounds. She had a brain size of 300 to 350 cubic centimeters. Compared to us in brain power, she possessed a moped. Her pelvis was oriented for walking upright, but her elongated fingers and toes were adapted for climbing. Because she is the earliest creature discovered who was bipedal, she is regarded as related to us. She is where our lineage begins. Next in line is Australopithecus afarensis, otherwise known as Lucy. She lived in Africa about three to four million years ago. This is what remains of her skeleton. From that skeleton we can tell that she also walked upright and had a slightly larger brain size than Artie, measuring about 400 to 500 cubic centimeters. There is no evidence she used tools, however, or had any form of human-like culture. This is Lucy headed for the beach with her boyfriend. She was hot stuff back in the day. The next step is a significant one. Homo habilis lived in Africa about 2.3 to 1.6 million years ago. Importantly for us, there has been a large growth in the brain. Habilis has a brain size of 750 cubic centimeters, which in comparison to the size of his body was an increase of 150 percent. Along with the larger brain also comes the first discovered use of stone tools. Habilis is the Latin word for skillful. Because Habilis was skilled enough to create and use tools and pass along that knowledge to others, they were the first members of the Homo genus, meaning they belonged to the same genus as ourselves. While these tools don't look like much, it is hard to overstate their importance in terms of survival. We know from their campsites that Habilis ate both meat and plants and were probably scavengers eating carrion. Before creating these tools, everything was torn apart with teeth and hands. They could not cook their food because the domestication of fire had not yet been discovered. But now they could cut their meat into smaller chunks, getting more nutrition, and giving themselves a large evolutionary advantage. In other words, Habilis was much more likely to survive and reproduce. It was in this way that evolutionary selection pressures led to the survival and growth of creatures with increasingly larger brains. To finish our evolutionary history, please view part two.